Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video on some of the latest stuff that I've got in that all kind of seems to fit with smaller, more compact, lightweight builds. Now there's a video transmitter here, believe it or not, a camera and also the new Finder Mini from Vinefly. So stay with me, I'll unpack these and go through some of the specs. First one we'll take a look at is this thing from HGLRC. This is the Zeus Nano Video Transmitter. Now I'm quite fond of HGLRC, they make some really good quadcopters, so I'm kind of interested to see how this performs. But the big surprise when I take it out the back is how incredibly small it is. Now, despite its small size, this has a built-in microphone. Uh, input voltage is only 5 volts, so you're going to have to make sure that you're using it on something with a good regulated 5-volt power supply. That's about the only downside on this thing. I guess there wasn't room for it. Uh, in pit mode, it'll pull about 75 milliamps, and it'll run at either 25, 100, 200, or 300. 100 milliwatts at 300 milliwatts it'll be pulling about 400 milliamps and it's great to see that information in the specs ipex antenna connector with two antennas supplied a little whip if you want to stick this inside some kind of whoop style model or if you want to put another antenna on it then there is an sma flying lead as well standard 40 channels on this thing are a b e f and r frequency groups and the installation holes are 16 by 16 and 25.5 by 25.5 m2 there is also 20 by 20 m3 as well and it's only when you put it by the side of something like the atlatl hv one of my favorite vtx's you can see how incredibly small it is. It's almost a shame that they've put these little wings on the side for the mounting holes. Uh, I could use something like this if they clipped off those side bits and with the perforations, it looks like that's something you could do. And if you got rid of the side pieces, you snip those off, this becomes an incredibly small package. It only weighs about two and a half grams. So this is gonna be perfect for small wings and really small builds. I just put a VTX in my ZOHD Dart 250G as part of a build, and this would have been a much better idea, particularly with the kind of little bit of heat shrink that you can pop over the top, keep everything nice and safe. This is a smashing idea for those things where you don't need ridiculous amounts of power and you've got a good strong 5 volt supply. Next one I'll talk about is this one here. This is the Firefly Finder Mini. Now there's been a couple of versions of the Firefly Finder out. Very hard to say that quickly three times in a row. This is the very latest version. This is pretty new. Um, now I tend to put finders on models where I'm a bit worried that the battery is gonna be ejected. Putting these things on the model, particularly at this time of year, is very handy. Now I've been putting these Matek Lost Model beepers on a lot of my flying wings just to help find them if they come down, particularly in the long struggler grass that's in the fields at the moment. Uh, but they only work, of course, if the flight controller is still powered. The really nice thing about the Vifly Finder is it has its own little battery on the back. It's incredibly loud. It has a flashing LED. In fact, something very similar to this is on the back of this GEP RC quadcopter. It's hidden away at the back. This is the little um, Explorer from GEP RC, a little four inch model. Amazing little thing this. I'll put a link to the review down below of this one. But there's a little finder hidden away in the back. So just a couple of specs on this one, a 19 by 11 by 12 millimeters, so it's pretty small, will fit almost anywhere. Again, under three grams, a 100 decibel sounder, so very, very loud, up to seven hours working time. Charge time is gonna take about one and a half hours. That's the only downside with this. It kind of trickle charges when you plug it in. And the input voltage on this is four and a half to 7.4 volts. And the way it works is once it's triggered, the first 40 seconds is low volume, 40 seconds to the first half an hour is maximum volume every five seconds, and then it goes down after the first half an hour, the next 30 minutes, to maximum volume every 10 seconds, and then after an hour, maximum volume every 20 seconds. But this is one of those really cool things. If you haven't got one of these on one of your smaller models, I would invest in a finder if you're worried about the battery being ejected. 
Last one we'll have a look at is this thing here. This is the Cadix Rattle 2. Rattle? Not sure exactly how you're going to say that. Now this is listed as a Starlight camera. Uh, field of view on this is 165 degrees. PAL NTSC selectable. I'll show you the menus in a moment. 19, 4.3. It's a micro size, low latency camera. Uh, perfect for, uh, it says drones and smaller models in the listings. But actually there's lots of wings now that this uh, size of camera is perfect for. Now the center in here is one by 1.8 inch starlight camera. Resolution is a little bit higher than some of the other cameras I look at. So this is 1200 TVL lines. Field of view is 165 field of view. Lens is a 2.1 millimeter. Uh, wide dynamic range and digital noise reduction is in here. Uh, there is also a CVBS video output, but the big news on this is the minimum illumination is 0 0.0001 lux. That is substantially more sensitive than lots of the other cameras around from other people. So if you've been looking for a camera, a modern camera with modern setup electronics and software that will work in very low light conditions, this might be the one for you. Wide power inputs of 5 to 40 volts, which is perfect for flight controllers. And it only weighs 5.9 grams with the standard dimensions 19 by 19 by 20 millimeters. I do like the fact that with this camera, you do get all the things like we used to uh, with FPV cameras. There is the joystick, which is a proper little joystick rather than the buttons. And you also have the mounting hardware and the cables as well. So let me just power it all up and I will uh, give you an idea of what is available through the menus. Uh, the first thing that struck me when I powered this on was how beautiful the picture is. Uh, looking just at these boxes here on the table, it's not a particularly bright day, but the image is really, really good. Very bright colours, great contrast. The only thing I was struggling with was to try and get it so that you could see the menu here nice and clearly. As soon as it goes into a very black environment, uh, that super low sensitivity really, really starts to kick in. But as I run through this, you can kind of see the, the standard stuff on here, the exposure settings, you have all the things like the white balance, you have how it handles day to night, whether how the image enhancing is done, uh, the video out setting, and also the usual stuff like being able to inverse and flip the image as well. I've put mine, it's PAL by default, I put mine into 16.9 for the recording just to show you what that looks like. So here, walking down the path on the way to the canal, a beautiful bright winter morning, and you can see how the camera is performing. This is actually very nice and continuing to impress. But it's in twilight conditions and nighttime where this camera really shows how good it is. That additional sensitivity is fantastic and really shows you how good it is. If you were looking for a modern low light camera, uh, this is one to go for. Now, I don't do a lot of low light flying, but the daylight performance is very, very good as well. So a great all round camera that will also allow you to fly in some very, very low light conditions. So there you have it, a quick roundup of three things that have come in. Uh, these would be great on builds that you either need to keep the weight down or potentially builds where you don't have an awful lot of space. Stay tuned because I think you'll find that all of these things will appear in builds in the near future. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.